Welcome to our first edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast uh, in the year 2023. Of course, a lot of you may be watching this or listening to this at any given time in today's world. But Bubba, today uh, we're going to be talking about a topic. I remember the first time you and I started learning about this, that that you know what happens to our luggage when when it the airline loses it and you never see it again or <laughs> or no one could ever you know figure out where it went uh, uh, where what it, what happens to those items do are it's like the mystery I heard uh, uh, some comedians talking about what happens to that sock we keep yeah, losing the in lost the dryer. sock in the dryer yeah what, they all go to the same place yeah right? where, where strangely are they? so believe it or not we're gonna answer that question today. Uh, maybe you're aware or maybe you're not aware of something called unclaimed baggage as far as the, the, the retail store, unclaimed baggage. I was telling our guest today, Jennifer, many, many times when I'm traveling mm-hmm. and I tell people I'm from Alabama and they will say, how close is that to Scottsboro? And I know exactly what the next line is. Is that, is that real? The unclaimed baggage thing? And I said, oh, it's real. I've been there. I've seen it myself. So Jennifer Kreitner, she's Vice President of Retail and Community Relations with Unclaimed Baggage. First of all, Jennifer, welcome to Rick and Bubba University. Thank you for having us. We're so honored to be here. Well, we're excited. We've always been very intrigued uh, with, with this, with Unclaimed Baggage. Now, tell us, we, of course, know that the largest store is Scottsboro, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Do you have other locations? No. In, yeah, That's it. We're the only one. The only and and one is there anybody world. else that does this? No. We are the only one that's strictly airline-based. So we have contracts with all the major airlines. And it's a really fascinating process where we go around the country to get this unclaimed baggage and bring it back here to Scottsboro. Now, do you fly on a plane to go get it? No, just trucks. Trucks. I started to say they could lose it again. If you've never been, it's a it's a tourist attraction. It is. We are actually one of the top tourist attractions in the state of Alabama. We welcome nearly a million visitors a year through our doors. <laughs> the inventory is constantly changing. It's just a fascinating thing. And Scottsboro is a beautiful place. We're nestled in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, yeah. where the mountains meet the lakes. We're a lake town, so it's a great little community to visit. Yeah, my wife is from Guntersville, oh, yeah. so same lake. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so I'm very familiar of the beauty of this part of our beautiful state, uh, our home state. Uh, so if you're ever in Alabama, you got to get unclaimed baggage uh, on, on your uh, on your stop. Well, Jennifer, I, I know some of the history, but for those that yeah. are watching the podcast today, let's start with that. How in the world did yeah. this ever get started? Yeah, so Mr. Hugo Doyle Owens is our founder. We call him affectionately Mr. Owens or Doyle Owens. He lived in Scottsboro, and much like yourself, he was a ham radio operator. Oh. That was his hobby. Well, they he like loved to, to do things. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was on the ham back in early 1970, 1969, 1970, and he heard from his friend in Trailways Bus Lines, who was also a ham operator, and he said, Joel, we've got this problem. We're building unclaimed bags. And Mr. Owens, the entrepreneur that he is or was, grabbed a borrowed pickup truck and $300 and went to Washington, D.C. to pick up the first load of unclaimed baggage. So he was presented with a problem Mm -hmm. and an opportunity to solve, and he jumped on that opportunity. And so he picked up 110 suitcases, drove them back like the clampets in the back of a 1965 (laughs) Chevy C10. I was trying to say, he had to stack that pretty high. Yeah, pretty high. And then he sold out the very first day. And he he, full-time, he was an insurance salesperson. But he knew right then he was onto something amazing. And it's been a great, the American dream, right? It's just a great story of just entrepreneurship and hard work and um, scrappiness and finding a way to make something successful. I love these entrepreneurs. Oh yeah, I mean, they, I, they, I love they, hearing the way about their mind and works and and all these different things. Necessity being the mother of invention. Yeah. So it began to grow from there. It's now fifty thousand square feet. Yes, our oh, retail wow. store is it, fifty thousand square feet. We're actually celebrating our fifty third anniversary this year. Wow! So we were founded in nineteen seventy by Mr. Owens, and and we've really been able to stand on his shoulders as it's become what it what it's become today. So now that we've answered the question, did you know this store existed? Yes, unclaimed baggage. How, what's the process? When does the luggage become available to you? Yeah, that's what, a great question. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a process. We, as I mentioned, we have contracts with all major airlines, and they're successful 99.5% of the time in re, reuniting a person with their unclaimed bag. 
But, but after, every now yeah, and then. But after 90 days of that extensive process, right. there's that fraction of 1% when there are millions of people traveling every single day still adds up to a lot of salvage. Yeah. And that's where we come in. After 90 days, we're able to purchase these suitcases sight unseen. You know, we never know what we're going to find. We pick <laughs> them up and we bring them back to Scottsboro where we start mining them. It's really kind of like an archaeological dig, if you will. I bet it is. It's not a sexy job. I joke a lot of times it's not sexy. You know, it's lots, anything and everything you could possibly imagine that someone would travel with or just scratch your head like, why were you traveling with that? Right. Um, recently, I opened up a bag with a travel blogger and it had men's athleisure. It had um, Tupperware. It had the bath mat to your shower. And it had the faucet to a ki- kitchen sink. And every bag tells a story. And we're like, who is this person? Was he some kind of germ- germaphobe <laughs> or something? He carried his exactly. own bath mat. You just never know. And he had his own, he would connect it to if there was a sink in the room. Yep. Own faucet, own Tupperware, and clothes. So, Rick, and, that and, may have been Speedy's bag. <laughs> there might have been that Tupperware was. in there. And in these cases, just for whatever reason... The airline and this person just can never connect? They just can't connect. And we tell people all the time, we encourage you, put your business card in several locations in the bag. Take pictures. Stay connected with your airlines because their goal is to get that bag back to you. But after that 90 days, if it's not possible, then that's where we step in. And we really do see it as our mission to take these orphan bags. And our mission and our purpose is to take these unclaimed bags and redeem them for good, these lost, unclaimed, and rejected items for good and for the glory of God. And so that's where our whole team steps in, and we determine what we sell, what we recycle, Mm -hmm. and what we donate. In fact, we only sell about a third of what comes through unclaimed baggage. Another third we recycle, and another third we donate to some amazing charities all over the world. Now, when you say recycle, what is that recycling like I... Think some, like so in some traditional manners, it's right. like what you think. Um, it could be fabric recycle. It can be electronics recycle. It mm-hmm. could be your cell phone that's crashed and smashed, and there's no way to sell it. But the insides of that are still good. And so we want to get that to somebody that can harvest the good out of it, if you will, right. so that it can live on in another device. Yeah. Now, when, when I think about... That sounded just like an organ transplant, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> it, did. Kind of. it did. How do you get into the luggage that people have secured? I mean, how do you open it? Yeah, so usually there, you know, well, you let me say, usually there's yeah. not a lot to it, quite frankly. Yeah, usually yeah. it's pretty it, easy to open. Once it's over and you can get into it any way yeah. you want to and you don't care about damaging the luggage, right. it's not that complicated then, is right. it? Right, it's really not. And we have a team of experts that yeah. their whole job is going through these bags and determining mm-hmm. what's sold, what's um, recycled, what is donated. Um, We have the largest laundry facility in the state of Alabama. We process 50,000 units a month. That's more than the average laundry facility does in an entire year. Wow. Um, We... (laughs) A lot of clothing. Yeah, with electronics, all of the data is protected and secured, and it meets Department of Defense protocol and standards in terms of how we handle those things. Um, The retail floor is restocked with up to 7,000 items every single day. How many? Every day? Every day. So So the inventory is constantly changing and turning. Jennifer, so the amount of baggage that you get, you said, was about half a percent, right? Did you say it was 99 99 and a half? So when you look at these bags, what happens with it? Is it just they can't get in touch with the airlines? They can't communicate? You know, and I think to a certain degree and extent, sometimes people just leave it and just say, you know, I'm out. I'm I'm not going to go through the hassle. I'm just going to leave it. Sometimes they just really are devoid of any identifying information. Right. Um, And people just don't do a good job of following back up and going through the necessary steps to get that bag back. Because sometimes people like me would be a prime example. Right. Prime example. Let me tell you something. I'm the other end of the spectrum. Whatever the opposite of a hoarder is, that's what I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so I don't know what that's called, but but a I, w- I would be that person that would say, I know I can follow steps to get my luggage right. back. I'm not willing to do it. Right. Uh, I don't. What's in there? I don't really care about. I can get another piece of luggage. I'm done with this. Right. Because I don't want to deal with what it takes to get it back. Because sometimes it's not a simple process. Sometimes it's quite simple. It comes to your hotel a day later or whatever, and they do a good job of that, and you're thankful. But when it gets more complicated than that, you're right. I think sometimes people just abandon the process. Right. You know, a few years ago, we were on a chartered flight to go see Jack State play in the national championship game in Texas, and they lost our luggage coming back. Oh, wow. 
And the running joke was we may have to go up to Scottsboro and, and, <laughs> and see on, if we'll we can find it. You. <laughs> and you know what? It, we, we replaced everything, and it showed back up at our door, and it was about 90 days later. I mean, I'd oh. already forgot. I'm like, what is that suitcase? Oh, was it really? Two suitcases is that on the so porch, interesting. you know? But yeah. it did show back up. Now I've got a lot of extra stuff. <laughs> right. Well, to, to my <laughs> point. Yeah. I got, I got an extra CPAP machine out of the deal, so <laughs> that's, that's good. good. Yeah, you always need a backup. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the longest I've ever lost luggage was, was really one day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I've never. And I would say ne- that's pretty typical. It, it's never that long. Now, it is funny when you're in Prague, and you don't have your luggage, oh, and, and, and they start bed. and they start giving you pajamas and stuff they have at the hotel. <laughs> and and it was interesting, even though it was Prague, to watch Sherry and me, full blown adults, sleeping in Tigger. <laughs> pajama bottoms and Mickey Mouse uh, stuff. It, for some reason, their pajamas were Disney themed. Oh gosh! In, in Prague, funny story though about that because you know you go up and I'm talking to the guy at the hotel and I said our luggage has been lost, and he goes, well, "How did you fly in?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, you know we did this and, and we and we had our layover where it got lost was France." And of course he goes, the French. <laughs> <laughs> and he said this. Oh, you know, he told me, France. next time you should have flew through Germany. <laughs> because we don't lose luggage. And I was like, okay. I'm just, Noted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That or litter. <laughs> the French. He was so disgusted that we'd gone through France. <laughs> you know, he was blaming them for it. I will right, we'll come back. Let's continue. There's a lot to talk about. Jennifer, I want to ask you yeah. about items that you find. I mean, yeah, that's when I think be, of a suitcase, yeah. I think underwear, socks, you yeah. know. But. I'm sure you, as you mentioned earlier, you've run across some oddities, and we'll, we'll break that down a little bit. You know, bit. just like she said about, about being an archaeologist, I bet you've got some interesting finds. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, we'll continue that when Rick and Bubba University continues. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. So, Bubba, we talked about this uh, on the big show, and it's it's not complicated. It's not a fun topic, but life insurance, uh, it really gets down to this. Uh, if you and I go on to glory prior to our wives and our family, we want to know that they're going to be financially taken care of. That's right. That's it. Uh, and you do that your... is if they can learn not to spend every right. time they well, get their hands on. But that's another podcast. Honestly, if if we could work on that, we wouldn't need life insurance. <laughs> but 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 the fact that we we that that's that's an uphill climb. We're going to need uh, some life insurance. But I don't want it to be complicated. Back to what we were talking about with our guests today. If things get a little bit hassle, old bird, you leave. So here's here's what you got to do. If it's three million dollars or less in coverage. Now think about it, that's a big that, number. Yeah. Three million dollars or less. It's one hundred percent digital, no doctors, no needles, no paperwork. Just answer a few questions about your health and an application, and when you're approved, boom, it's on. And then if if you pass, your loved ones get this amount of money, period. Uh, there's no hidden fees that you can cancel anytime you want to, get a full refund. If you change your mind in the first uh, 30 days, it, you just need a few minutes on a phone or a laptop to apply, and then ladder smart algorithms will work in real time, and they'll find out if you're instantly approved. Don't put it off. Instantly approved. But, That's what we learned, Rick. You know why? As you, you get, get older, yeah. the rates go up. Boy, they really want a lot if you get older. Yeah. So, uh, so ladder can if help you're 49, you. Forty nine. Really take a look at this. This is our. This is the answer to your problem right here. Ladderlife.com slash Rick Bubba. Put our names together. No and there. L a d d e r life dot com slash Rick Bubba. So our guest is uh, Jennifer Kreitner, Vice President of Retail and Community Relations, Unclaimed Baggage is the place, a 50,000-square-foot store uh, that uh, sells unclaimed baggage, donates unclaimed baggage, uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, th- but they're dealing with unclaimed baggage. And, Bubba, when we took the, the break there, the question that's on all of our minds. Yeah, what kind of things do you find, other than the basic underwear, socks, you know, shirts I had planned for the trip. What yeah. kind of things do you run into? And what is the strangest of all of them? You know, it's amazing what people travel with, as I, as I alluded to earlier. Some of the coolest things that I've seen in my 25 years there, we've had at least two full suits of armor. We've had an <laughs> aluminum fire suit. Suits of armor. Suits. Plural of armor. <laughs> um, aluminum fire so, suit. So you're talking about like a knight. Yeah, like a knight. Somebody was traveling with that. Um, I've a trunk of Versace runway gowns, just fresh off the runway. What? 
Um, hand-painted silk kimonos. The McDonald's arches, believe it or not, have shown up there. Just the arches sign. Um, we've had vacuum-packed and sealed frogs. Um, we've had a 40-carat raw Colombian emerald. No. Yes, in the late night. 40 carats? 40 carats. As big as my hand, not really, but it was big. And we found it in the toe of a sock, rolled up in the corner of a suitcase. Just what totally was that abandoned. Value, How did it was thirty two thousand dollars at the time. <laughs> and we sold it for about fourteen thousand dollars. Fun story about that. We sold it to a couple from Tennessee who did not believe in the US banking system. So they went home to Tennessee and they brought back their cold hard cash to wow. buy this fourteen thousand dollar emerald and it truly smelt like the deep freezer that you have at home. So that's kind of a, a, a fun story oh, really? there. Um, we had a weathered, very cool vintage kind of Gucci suitcase that was filled with Egyptian artifacts, mummified falcon inside. We sent that to Christie's auction house in the 80s. Um, so it was legit. It wasn't legit, hot or anything. Do you, find, to- do you find hot things that have been stolen well, interesting. Or very interesting. So... A new display that we have in the store is jean michel Basquat's art. And he was kind of a U.S. graffiti artist, um, lived in Brooklyn, Andy Warhol's heyday in the early 80s. He died tragically young in his 20s. So the most expensive piece of artwork he's ever sold went for $110 million. Ma, million. million. Ma, ma. So we had about seven of these guys show up of his art in a in at unclaimed baggage and as you can imagine it piqued our entrance and we have this amazing authentication team so we went to work on this best squat art like is this is this the real deal so much so we got the attention of the fbi I and bet. the fbi came calling and said we're gonna need those can you hand those over to us and of course we work with all authorities and so we're so thankful for their help though because they were able to help us to determine that these were in fact really really good fakes okay so good in fact they said can we keep a couple of them to help train our agents on counterfeit art and, and you so said, well we sell those yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we actually try really hard not to sell any reproductions or replicas of anything like right, Louis Vuitton right. or things like that. Um, really cool. Another thing that we had come through, the most expensive thing that we've ever sold at Unclaimed Baggage was about six years ago. It was a men's platinum presidential Rolex. Its retail value at the time was $64,000. We sold it for $32,000. The gentleman still shops with us about once a month. And two weeks before Christmas, he stopped me and said, Miss Jennifer, had it reappraised at a price for $100,000 about a month ago. So mm. you just truly never know what you're going to find. Treasures, amazing treasures, really cool things like the things that I've mentioned. What's um, the most common thing? Yeah, that's a great question. It's tough to say. Eyewear is very common. People just leaving them on planes. Headphones, water bottles. Over the last five years, there's oh. been this huge insurgence of like right. hydro flask and Yeti water bottles. Just so <laughs> many books, of course, coats and jackets. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It's one of the most common things we find. It's also one of the best values in store. And it's also one of the items that we donate the most frequently, as is eyewear, as is headphones. We donate hundreds of headphones to school systems. Um, wow. We've donated 1.125 million pairs of eyewear to date through Lions Club International. Um, some really cool stories I could share with you guys once we get to talking about donations. But it's really amazing what people travel with. There's some really standard things like headphones and water bottles and eyewear. And then there's the head scratchers like <laughs> faucets to the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink. So, Well, I, I keep thinking about some of these items you just mentioned. Not, not so much the odd ones, but the incredibly valuable ones. Do people ever show up at the store or after the fact yeah, and say, say you know, by the way, I had a, yeah, a ruby can, rolled up in a sock. Yeah, can and, I look and <laughs> see if my thing's here? So or? what happens more times than not are people will call. And, okay. you know, they're very emotionally attached to their items as they rightfully should be, but they want us to find it. If you ever come to our facility and you see 50,000 square feet, 7,000 unique items a day, truly most things are like trying to find a needle in a haystack. No doubt. Um, And we just really encourage people to stay in contact with their airline. That's going to be their best course of action because like I said, 99.5% of the time, even Bubba's example of 90 days later, it showed up. The process really does work even though it's, sometimes might require some labor. But I will tell you, on some of these jewelry things, 
when your jewelry is that fine, you're going to have the insurance, jewelry right. insurance right. that covers those things. So I think a lot of times that's why those things just okay. end up with us is they're being compensated in some way um, for that loss that they experienced. Yeah. Um, so so you do have people like they wouldn't do it on something like, uh, you know, I lost the things we all travel with. Right. But something <laughs> I like. I lost shampoo. Something like a 14 karat. You they know, might, they, but you'd they, be they surprised. They might call and say, by the way, I, 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 well, they've would, lost it. The airlines the, lost it. Yeah. Would the insurance company ever come looking for that if they paid off? Would they? No, I don't know. It's never come up, but that's a really great question. It's never come up in my time there. Makes sense. Um, I would look for it. And I think a lot of times people are looking Probably for sentimental much. items. It might be a right. teddy bear that no you and I have no regard for. Right, we'll donate right, to yeah. a, a charity, but may mean everything to someone oh, else. Oh, yeah, sure. So. Yeah, and um, those are the things I guess people you know would follow up on. But you're saying – Coming to the store with that in mind, oh gosh, fifty thousand square feet, seven thousand new items a day, a call, but the, it, always the best course of action. Stay in yes, contact with the airline. I cannot stress that enough. Right. Yeah, we are not a tracking organization. We're a retailer in North Alabama. Once it and gets yeah, there, yeah, it's it's um, you virtually all it. hope is lost, and yeah. we're empathetic. We we hate that that's happened, but to feel good, you know. These items are going to someone else's home and are given a second life in your home, or they're going to yeah. a really great charity. You're like the island of misfit toys. Yeah, kind yeah. of. That's a really good analogy. Well, what about? <laughs> I would assume that you guys have incredible prices on these items. Now I know um, it's kind of like what we found out that time. You know, if someone thinks your pet monkey, you know, might be carrying disease, even if they come back and say, "Good news, he doesn't have it." Right. It's what we call a destructive test. Yeah. The way yeah. that we get to the bottom of it is severe. Yeah. So if the luggage was not damaged beyond repair in getting the stuff out of it, yeah, the luggage, I guess, is available too. It is, and people are so surprised when they come in to our store that we don't have a huge selection of actual suitcases. Mm-hmm. But to your point, once it's gone through ninety days of conveyor belt after conveyor belt, we've got broken wheels and handles and zippers, right. and we only want to sell the best right. product to our guests. And then um, a good percentage of our suitcases we give to through our charity that's called Love Luggage. Right, and we'll get, and that's what we're yeah. talking. When we come back, but so so yeah, so, so you, to your point, most of it's beat up pretty bad, Absolutely. and then we may have to beat it up to get Absolutely. the stuff out of it. <laughs> But if it survives mm-hmm. all that and wasn't donated, right. you have some there. And I would assume some of that, uh, I mean, all the stuff there is at a great price. Oh, because, yes. We price things typically 30 to 80% off retail value. Depends on the condition, the quality, the brand of the item. If it's the latest, greatest tech a- gadget, it's probably only going to be 30% off retail. But that's still a great deal when they're yeah. not at a discount anywhere else. And then on average, most things that you interact with are probably close to 50, 40 to 50% off retail value. Yes. So if you're a bargain shopper, I mean, and I bet y'all get, I mean, I I bet people do this like, you know, I know people that just absolutely love (laughs) to get up on a Saturday and just go. And if there's a yard sale somewhere, yes. if there's a garage oh, sale, and those a are our sale, people. <laughs> yeah, I've those bet thousand that, mile yard the, yard sales. Right, unclaimed like baggage is like going uh, to heaven. Yes. Um, I mean, it, it's uh, so. Uh, let, do you sell this online too? We do. So there's, you can order it. You don't yes, have to come. So to the store? there's completely separate inventories. Okay. That's okay. one thing that gets people confused a little bit. Is the inventory online is totally separate than the retail store and the dot com unclaimedbaggage.com, We reload that site with 5,500 items every single week. So the depth and breadth of the product is definitely in Scottsboro. So it's worth the trip. But if you can't make the trip, every week the inventory is changing online as well. So um, we've been amazed at seeing how popular that website's become. There's an amazing story, if I have a moment to tell it, sure. where we were planning our 50th anniversary in 2020. We were kicking off a 50-state road tour in March of 2020, and we all know what happened in March of yeah, 2020. Yeah. The whole world the changed. The world came to an end. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah. had unprecedented levels of product. Um, we were scheduled to be on the Today Show, um, and anytime we're on a show like that, it's game-changing for months on the end. Yeah. But we couldn't hit the road because of the pandemic mm. and we had this dot com that we had been building for the road tour so if you were in des moines iowa you could interact with our brand at the dot com but in all of god's amazing providence when the whole world was shut down and everyone started shopping online we had a dot com that, that we could launch we had no idea a pandemic was coming but god knew wow. and we had unprecedented levels of product to support that site and to see the success of the dot com over the last three years has been just truly providential it's and what incredible. is it? what is the dot com so unclaimedbaggage.com is where 
where you can learn about our brand and all that we do, Reclaimed for Good as well, our charitable foundation. But but you can also shop online and you can't make the trip. You Maybe you live in Birmingham or Chattanooga or wherever you live and you just feel like Scottsboro is too far away. Unclaimedbaggage.com is where you can go to have this treasure hunting experience online because truly you never know what you're going to find. We have the weird and wonderful items available for sale <laughs> online. We have the jewelry that rivals the Diamond District in New York. We have everyday wow. items, tech items. It's really a great online experience. Well, we'll come back and uh, we, we just want to continue to hear more when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast continues. This is the Rick and Bubba show. Watch more at blaze tv.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Well, you, you heard uh, Jennifer talking about one of the items that, that people travel with all the time and that's earbuds, uh, earbuds. Um, it's like, it's not whether you have them. It's just what kind do you have? I mean, everybody loves earbuds now that we can get so much content. There's so much out there, but you know, not, no two earbuds are the same. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, Rick, I know the premium brands and I've seen the price on those and thank you. Well, what if I told you that, that Raycon's everyday earbuds, they look, they feel, they sound better than ever. They, they are comparable to the premium audio brands. I mean, uh, apples and apples, but about half the price. Okay, now, now now I have your attention. They've got the optimized gel tips. You ever try to put earbuds in your ear and they hurt? Yes. You're like, I don't even. Yes. Well, these optimized gel, uh, gel tips, um, I've been doing this for a while, Rick. You can handle gel tips. Um, <laughs> they, what they do, they allow you to kind of manipulate the earbud so it will actually be more comfortable. And what else? You don't want them to fall out. You know, say you're being active in your earbuds, so they will not budge. Trust me on that one. Uh, Raycons give you eight hours of playtime. 32 hours of battery life, and as I said, they're about half the price of the other premium audio brands that would be in their same category. 50,000 five-star reviews, and we can add our audience to this, Bubba. I mean, people are always talking about uh, the customizable sound profiles, earbud tap functions, noise isolation, the awareness mode. You know, those two, say you need to be aware of what's going on in the room. Well, you go to awareness mode. You want to get in your own world. You want to relax. You're concentrating. You would go to the noise isolation. So it gives you all kinds of ways to customize your experience. And we're going to give you new, an additional 15% off by going to buyraycon.com slash Pod. So put our name together and put pod at the end. That gets you 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash Pod to get an additional 15% off. So we're back on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Jennifer Kreitner is our guest. She is with Unclaimed Baggage. Uh, we talked about how it was created, why it was created, how it works, some of the, the memorable finds, <laughs> how you can get items from them in the store or online at unclaimedbaggage.com. Oh, I do want to mention, if you're ever coming to the big show, uh, and you're in our golden ticket seats, and you're coming to ho- our home state of Alabama. Really, from where we are, uh, it's about an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's yeah. not it's not that far, and um, so you could actually include that in your "I'm coming to Rick and Bubba's hometown" experience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'd love that. Yeah, we'd love but, to host you. And the beauty of, of Sweet Home Alabama is, as you move through our state, you really ex- it's not like. Everything looks the same. No. At one part of the state, you yeah. kind of have this look. At another part of the state, and to see that beautiful lake and to see the mountains and and all of that uh, that uh, that are north of where we are, about an hour and a half, it, it's worth your trip. And now you got another reason to go. Yeah, absolutely, unclaimed baggage. Let's talk about what ha- how how the charity works. This is one of the the cool things about what you do. It is kind of another way. For things to be provided for people who who don't have or struggle to have. Absolutely. Well, we talked about our excess, the things that people travel with most often. There is no way we could sell all all of those things. And we really do believe in a sustainable mission. We joke we were sustainability before sustainability was cool (laughs) back in 1970. And we want to give these things a home and a purpose. And so whether it's the excess of headphones and eyewear, as I mentioned, one point. 
1.25 million pairs going to Lions Club International, where we've heard stories back from communities in Mexico where a, a single mother, for example, goes legally blind, cannot work in the textile industry anymore, goes home to her three children with no income until Lions Club shows up with unclaimed eyewear to pair her with her prescription so she can go back to work to provide for her family. Mm. Or we hear about these children that live in the communities around the equator, if they don't have access to sunglasses, they will develop eye disease. Right. It's not a matter of right. if, they will. Right. And so being able to supply that and to hear those stories back is just so rewarding. Um, we also get untold amounts of medical equipment. Those CPAPs that Bubba was talking about, right. um, wheelchairs, canes, crutches. We couldn't sell a fraction of that, nor would we want to when there's so many people in need. And so we work with some incredible organization, Joni, Joni and Friends, Joni Erickson Tata. Oh, yeah, sure. Her mission, Wills mm-hmm. for the World, comes a couple of times a year to pick up tractor trailer loads of these wheelchairs and crutches and canes. And they'll take the wheelchairs to a prison mission in Louisiana. And those prisoners volunteer their time to restore and get these cleaned up and ready to go. Gives those prisoners purpose and mission there. Um, and then they're taken all over the world to people that otherwise would not have access to that type of thing. I mentioned our own in-house charity that's called Love Luggage. Mm-hmm. It's near and dear to our hearts. About 15 <laughs> years ago, we read a news story about foster children putting their belongings, their earthly possessions in trash bags whenever the worst day of their life is happening and they're being taken from mom and dad. Mm-hmm. And what I know is it doesn't matter what we think about mom or dad. It's still the worst day of that child's life yeah. because it's still mom or dad. No doubt. And no, no, that just the picture that that gives to the child that their items are in a trash bag we thought that ought not be we can do something about that so we provide suitcases and we give our guests children in our community um, people on our road tour the 50 state road tour opportunities to paint these beautiful images and messages of hope on these suitcases my husband and I happen to be foster parents and in May we had a beautiful red-headed eight-year-old girl come to our home and it was a horrible day for her mm. But she came to me so excited and said, Miss Jennifer, look what they gave me. They gave me a present. Mm. And it was love luggage suitcase. And it was filled with new clothes and things that she needed. And it was so cool for me to get to see that whole thing come full circle and to see the difference that it made in the life of a child in that moment was incredible. And then we work with homeless missions. So many coats are donated, so many toiletries and feminine hygiene products and sleeping bags. And we work with the Summit, which is a women's recovery home in um, Fort Payne, Alabama. Um, actually, um, the Trick Kathy family donated this multi-million dollar property to this woman, Miss Debbie Garner, with this incredible mission. And so we come al- alongside them and help supply needful things like um, cleaning supplies or Christmas gifts for their children or whatever they may need. Our excess goes to their thrift store so that they have a way of income. Right. So I could talk all day about Reclaim for Good. It's something we're all so passionate about. It's fun to be able to be a tourist attraction in Alabama. It's fun to provide 280 jobs to people in our community. It's fun to, to see those tax dollars and revenues come in to make a difference in our community right. that we live in. But the heartbeat and purpose behind what we do is really this act of giving and this sustainability that all of these things are getting a second life. And then these orphan suitcases are truly redeemed for good. Yeah, it's 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 if, as if you're going, here's things that people need. We're willing to get them ready so that they can use them and have them. And it's, instead of people having to decide <laughs> to donate, something happens that they get to donate anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it, and, the, and there's need, but there's again. There's incredible need. Well, you think about. I mean, you think about Jesus talking about, you know, for us not to be anxious about anything. Yeah. And, and when he's saying, look, this is God. I mean, look at the birds. They're not worried about what they're going to eat and, and, and all of this. And, and you're of much more value than a sparrow. So, um, and they leave a lot of their luggage yeah, behind. Yeah, so he's going to find a way. Absolutely. And this is just one of those ways that you think, this is how, how I ended up getting what I needed was really a bizarre it's process. Amazing. And you know what? And we consider that the highest honor and privilege to be able to be used and be a kingdom ministry and a kingdom business that can can be used in that way. It's yeah, what else incredible. matters? If, if you don't have any <laughs> impact for the kingdom, what does it really matter? Nothing else matters. Yeah, and, and so uh, that that's really fascinating. Now, are there people that you, know, you guys have a system now, you're rolling now. But people who sit down and go, here's here's the suitcase. It got to yeah. us. Let's open her up. And then you get it open, and you're like, all right, this is like a retail item. Uh, I think this is going to help us with our reclaim for good. 
Uh, this is uh, let's, I think this piece of luggage is savable for our you know our children's luggage program. Yeah. The people that sit down and vet all that yeah, out and then put is. it in whatever category it goes. And you know, there's science, there's data that we collect to back that up to sure. help us make those decisions. You know, we're a data driven world and society. Oh, yeah. But there's also a lot of art to it. And many of these women, we call them our openers. They rec- represent decades of experience of doing this job and kind of fine tuning their craft and trade, if you will. Um, so it's amazing to see. And to get that experience to open a suitcase is really cool. As a matter of fact, every single day inside of our retail store at around 2 o'clock, we have something called the baggage experience. I bet that's Where cool. a guest wins the opportunity to open up the suitcase. We've only had one member of staff go through the suitcase to make sure there's not nothing harmful, embarrassing, or dangerous. We right. have a mm-hmm. really good relationship with the local sheriff's department, as one might imagine. <laughs> um, but <laughs> they go through that process. The guests can do that. Also, just really cool, had this thought, these found treasures, we collect collected so many we sell a lot of cool things but we've saved a lot of cool things and in march in the spring of this year we're going to open up and unveil our new found treasures museum so that would be a great time for people to come take a look and visit um us there at unclaimed in scott so I, I know you you gave us the numbers a minute ago on how many items are updated every day but as far as the nuts and bolts of this how many trucks do you have yeah, coming you know in what? and how big and how often do you, does that process? I really don't have any like? stats to go with that. The The volume, the volume picture that I know every single day because of my close relationship right. with retail is that 7,000 unit number right. every single day up to 7,000 units. Wow. And then that laundry number, 50,000 unique pieces every single month, you know, it's just incredible volume. And now that people have returned to travel again right. since the pandemic is kind of behind us and people are out finding adventure again or maybe taking those business trips again instead of depending on Zoom all the time. You might get um, a big uh, group in from Southwest <laughs> over this past <laughs> weekend. Uh, We've had lots of time. questions about that. <laughs> We've had lots of questions about that. And what's true, so, though, Bubba, is there are ebbs and flows to yeah, our inventory. Oh, I bet. I bet. After the summer travel season, 90 days after, we're going to see an influx. Every Christmas, whether there's a, a an issue at the airline or not, we're going to see an influx right. around April because it's 90 days past a peak travel season. All right, we'll come back. we got one more segment, and we'll wrap things up with this uh, fascinating conversation with Jennifer Kreitner with Unclaimed Baggage when Rick and Bubba <laughs> University, the podcast, continues. All right, so one of the items that Jennifer and the gang find in luggage a lot is underwear. Uh, and let me tell you something. Uh, underwear is important, and being comfortable in your underwear and your loungewear, your pajamas, super important. Now, the the thing that we've talked about, Bubba, they do have things for women at Tommy John, but really we focus on the men since first we are men, and also because men, sadly, at sometimes think we were assigned our underwear uh, when we were young men, and these will be our underwear for the rest of our lives. Right. And and so that really isn't the every way to, now and then. Right. Yeah. Rare as it may right. be, you have to replace it. And then you'd go out and just go. <laughs> you just go to some discount store and grab you a pack, a little packet of of whitey tidies, and they last about that long. Yeah. But Tommy John, they they said, you know what, men should care about being comfortable as well uh, in their undergarments. And I'm going to tell you something. When you have a guarantee that says that if this is not the most comfortable uh, underwear that you've ever uh, worn, that they'll give you your money back, that shows you uh, how confident they are in, in the way they design. So what I also want to talk about is, you know, when we're getting the colder time of year, uh, you got to talk about loungewear, and you got to talk about pajamas as well. And they have the same commitment to these soft tri blends, uh, the, the, they've got the fabrics and the four way stretch and the, they don't do the lint balls or fuzz up. You ever seen you, you get your fabric, starts Rick. fuzzing up high yeah, tech, high tech, and they've got some great colors and you will be so comfortable. And uh, on those cold winter mornings when you wake up or maybe you're sitting around trying to drink your coffee and you want to be cozy and you want to be warm, get Tommy John loungewear, underwear, and pajamas. You are going to love it. And we're going to get you uh 20% off right now. So go to TommyJohn.com slash Rick Bubba. Put our names together. No and there. Just Rick Bubba. 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash Rick Bubba. Uh, d- look, be cozy this winter with loungewear, pajamas, and underwear from Tommy John. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at BlazeTV.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, wrapping up our conversation 
with Jennifer Kreitner, uh, Vice President of Retail and Community Relations, Unclaimed Baggage. You can find out more by going to unclaimedbaggage.com, no matter where you're watching or listening to this podcast. So you were talking about ebbs and flows going into the, the break of unclaimed baggage. No doubt when it was a worldwide pandemic, all of us were affected. Yeah. We'd never seen anything like that in our lives. At one time, travel was over. So believe me, we know. I know. So yeah. so <laughs> I thought we'd never be back. So wow. I mean, were, were you, you guys at some point going? All right, uh, this is uh, you know, and then it then it went almost twenty twenty one where we were almost back, but still a little skittish. Yeah. And uh, so have you? Has, first of all, tell us about that drop off, yeah. and second of all. Have you seen us get back to, does it look like to you guys that we're kind of back to yeah. normalcy? Well, I'm happy to tell you that story. I alluded to it a little bit when talking about we were ready to celebrate our 50th anniversary. We had unprecedented levels of product, and we were cool with that coming out of 2019 because we knew all the traffic was going to be coming. Right. right. <laughs> um, but that didn't happen. And air travel, it sometimes was like 30% employment. Business mm-hmm. travel, non-existent. Mm-hmm. And those were some powering days, you know, just like, Business, there were seven weeks where we couldn't even have our doors open. Uh, we weren't an essential business, right. you know, and um, that is where we saw the faithfulness and the hand of God sustain our business throughout that process. Because we had unprecedented levels of product in 2019, we had warehouses full of product wow. that we could lean on to get us through 2020 and beyond. And again, we thought we were celebrating a birthday party. That's what we thought we were getting ready for. But yeah. in all of God's providence, not only did we have a warehouse full of product, we had a dot com we could launch that and sustain our business. Game changer, so yeah. it was Jennifer, a game changer. I, I was going to mention that I had no idea you were online. Yes. I had no idea. Yeah. That, that has been eye-opening mm-hmm. for me, and I literally last segment ordered three pairs of sunglasses. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's that That's easy crazy. to do. Yeah. I mean, it's that easy. <laughs> I'm getting ready for spring. Yes, you know, I'll be we protected are too. You can never have enough pairs of sunglasses. You, you really never. can't because yeah. I usually will sit on one and completely destroy it beyond repair, yeah. and then I'll have one pair that's kind of cockeyed because I sit on it and bend it back the other no, way. No, you're right. I'm so but, mad. You know how we teach each other? I'm yeah. teaching myself right now. I'm making myself wear sunglasses that have a crack in them because <laughs> Cost of me messing them up. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I, I have a drawer full of them, and my supplies got low. But r- seriously, I was looking at these, and they're about fifty yeah, percent what you normally would order them. So we're yeah. we're excited. I'll let you know when okay, I get them. Great. Well, I hope I can get to this dot com before this podcast. <laughs> you'll buy, yeah, you'll buy I haven't, been to, I haven't been to elect. I haven't been to electronics yet. I'm gonna yeah. wait till I, know. After I thought about you and our electronics. Yeah. Oh, he'll be all over that. But you know, Rick, I'm happy to report that we have. More product than we even okay. had in 2019. There has been a resurgence of air travel and tourism travel um, like we've never seen. And we are just overjoyed to see kind of things return to normal, if you will. Can yeah. I tell you the thing I like about your website? And Rick knows I gripe about this all the time. He does. I know all the the kids and the young folks are goes. designing these now. And they got them so cool and hip, but you can't figure out right. how to navigate it. I think they, they do it that way for the other web designers. So they can, ooh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. You know what? I want straightforward. I got eyewear. I got clothes. I, you know, I click it. I go down. I see the Thank list. Thank you for yes. that. And it's easy. I put it in my cart. I check out. I mean, it's that quick, that's that great. easy. I, I hate having to try to navigate those oh. and try to figure out when it's just very straightforward. Keep it simple. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, if you want to find out more about it, obviously, uh, you can you can do what we suggest. You come see the Rick and Bubba show. You hang out with us. You make your yes. way to beautiful Scottsboro, Alabama. You go into that fifty thousand square foot uh, location, and you just your 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 eyes pop, uh, and you see all <laughs> that. Uh, or you can, if that's just not going to work, you can go to unclaimedbaggage.com and you can shop like Bubba just did online, and like I probably have done before this aired. So uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the number of laptops. And things. That's oh, amazing. It's unbelievable. That's amazing. And you know, it's really, we're only selling a fraction of what, what comes through because by the time an electronic device gets to, so often they're bricks, they're locked. Right. And so all it can be is parts and pieces. So, yeah. yeah and with the, when, when you do the, uh, the, the reclaim for good, 
Do you already have, I know you have ongoing relationships with people, but I guess people probably petition all the time. Can yes, we, you know, yes. you, you gotta, I guess if you've there's had, a need in your community, we'd love to hear about it. Um, you know, you can email info at unclaimedbaggage.com and they'll route that information to the right person. I'm the director of our charitable foundation, but I have great partners that work with me. Um, businesses that do giving well do it intentionally there's an intentionality right. behind it and so we have team members that that's, that's their whole job you know all of our team members are involved in it but there are people that work at unclaimed baggage that their sole job is giving i've always thought from the first day i ever found out about unclaimed baggage that this is one of the most <laughs> unique setups <laughs> it is i mean i don't what do you compare it to i mean there, there's nothing to compare it to we, we you found are your true. own thing <laughs> yeah we found that to be true it's hard to put us in a bucket we're retail but we're destination retail <laughs> um and then our, our close ties to the travel and tourism industry is also very unique well thank you for taking time yeah. to, to be with us That's again really cool. if you want to find out more uh either come to sweet home alabama our home state wherever you're watching and listening to this it's in scottsboro alabama or you can go to unclaimedbaggage.com uh, Jennifer, thanks for taking time thanks to be with us. Thanks for having us. Such an honor. Yeah, thank you. thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, and thanks to all of you out there for watching this edition or listening to this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast.